Hey, this is Paul. Welcome to the Mountain Man Chronicles. Hope you enjoy our video today. It's on our trip to Moab. If you look at this video up here, you'll see that we recently went over to Rim Rocker. Rim Rocker ends up in Moab. And in Moab, we went out and explored. We had three days to explore Moab. Um, they were days uh, six, seven, eight, on our, and nine on our trip. Um, we did three different areas. The first day, I opted to stay in camp in Moab, wanted to go explore Moab a little bit in town. The boys went out and did uh, the Top of the World Trail. Um, so that's unfortunately not gonna be covered. Um, what we did the second day was, it was supposed to be an easy day. We were gonna go out and explore some. Literally, we know that was gonna be the hardest day to three. Uh, we went out and explored the area, we ended up on some undercut shelf roads, and those of you that know my love of shelf roads, it was probably the most intense shelf roads I've done, and that's what the majority of this video is gonna be about. The last day, we started out to do Lockhart Basin. It turned out that it had a big washout. We did it from the non-Moab side in. About halfway there, we ended up this big washout that there was no way around, so we opted to turn around and just kinda go and explore uh, some of Canyonlands, which is an awesome area. Um, you'll see some of that in video as well. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you do, please remember to like and subscribe. Send me some comments if you've ever been out to Moab. What was your favorite trail there? Because there's a plethora of trails there. And also share with me uh, your favorite place and what scares you the most when you go out over landing? What, what challenges do you have? I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the Mountain Man Chronicles, where the spirit of adventure comes alive. I'm thrilled to have you join our journey into the great outdoors. I'm Paul Piazza. I'm your guide through the wilderness and the storyteller behind the Mountain Man Chronicles. I hope you share in our love and appreciation of what this great world has to offer. Here we live in three simple principles. Live, learn, and explore. Live, immerse yourself in the thrill of the moment, whether it be overlanding, exploring unique ghost towns, or simply enjoying the serenity of nature. We believe in living life to its fullest. Learn. Cultivate that childlike curiosity. Every adventure is an opportunity to learn and discover something new. From overlanding trips to mastering trail navigation, we're a constant journey of learning and growing. Explore. Be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Venture into the unknown. Our chronicles are a testament to the places we've been and the stories waiting to be untold. Join us as we explore the hidden trails to the pristine lakes and the mysterious places this great nation has to offer. And of course, what adventure would be successful without proper planning in the right gear? We'll be showcasing some of the tools of the trade along our journeys. I truly hope you enjoy our chronicles and the journey that my wife and I travel through during our overlanding adventures. Thanks for watching. So the whole idea of Moab here was to go out and explore for the first few days and just kind of check some things out and then finish off on a little bit of a harder trail. Uh, we're gonna see how it goes and give it a test out and really go exploring. So we're off to go check out some uh, interesting things. Uh, Tim always likes to find interesting finds and for Moab, Tim is leading the trip. I am just a follower. I was happy to hand off the reins whereas I led the Rim Rocker Trail. So here we go, going into exploring parts of Moab, ending up doing a little bit of a harder trail if you get out to Moab, make sure you stop and see Canyonlands. Canyonlands was just an awesome place. Great formations, vast, vast, vast just views from a mini epic place. It, it's kind of like a mini Grand Canyon, if you will. One of the unique things we did, and I kept, especially because of my era that I grew up in, I kept looking for a wily coyote to be smashing inside of a mountain or a rock to be chasing around for one of the roadrunners. Tim, which actually was leading this part of the expedition, uh, was looking for the place where they landed Airwolf. And I, I think we may have found it, but we're still searching for it. Just, you know, it was epic. The views here were stunning. The pictures here were outstanding. And there's a lot to see. I definitely recommend it. If you do go there, probably recommend bringing some gas if you're going to go explore. Because it's big. There was a lot of hidden gems around Canyonlands and just throughout Moab. Uh, we found like this place was just right off the beaten path, maybe about 200 yards hike. It actually wasn't strenuous at all. Um, 
It's basically made out of stone. It's somewhere where somebody looks like they camped or slept back in the Stone Age. It's actually marked as a marker on historic national things. We also found some petroglyphs uh, just out random in the middle of nowhere um, that were actually marked that were really cool. We had planned to go out and explore some of the canyons within Canyonland. There was some trails that you can take, so if you ever can do that, do it. But there are rules about dogs being off trail in national parks. So that's quickly threw a wrench in our plans. So Tim, being the wise man that he is, found us a remote trail that was supposed to be pretty easy that we were just going to go out and explore with some petroglyphs and some other cool things to see. Little we know, this turned out into our day's adventure. So this trail was supposed to take us up and around and reconnect back up to the highway, be about a two hour ride. Uh, we thought it would you know, look pretty easy. It was rated easy on the map, so nobody's error. What we thought was gonna be easy, kind of like what happened with the Rim Rocker. Weather had another change. The roads had another change. This ended up being a, a shelf road with an undercut, actually many different shelf roads, and we ended up having to turn around on it. Uh, we did see some petroglyphs. Uh, but it was a, a very nerve-wracking trip and so the next part of this video is all about just enjoying shelf road fun One of the coolest things about out being out in Moab is that you could go out on a trail almost anywhere and just go for miles and you'll end up on little shelf roads, you'll find petroglyphs, you'll just find unusual things. Now this trail was rated as easy on our apps that we used, but uh, it didn't turn out to be an easy trail. We were on a shelf road that was uh, mainly seems like it was probably made for UTVs. So if you look at the ridge as we're going up ahead along the ridge of that uh, vast canyon that was to the right, that was the road. And here we are, sped up a little bit, us up on that road, kind of going over rocks, going over the trail. It, it you know, it's funny because whenever you look at things in a video, you're like, eh, it wasn't very easy, but I was puckering pretty hard in this section because uh, there was some areas that uh, just, you know, like this, just have a rock basically holding up the side of a hill. Then you're coming around a big boulder, and my heart kind of went out to a few of the guys like Taylor and Chris on our trail because, you know, they have an overhead camper. So, you know, I get, and I'm not pulling my camper on this section. I'm just, you know, wheeling in the Jeep, and we're just cruising along, and I didn't have to worry about smashing the top of my Jeep into anything, whereas they kind of had to worry about that a little bit in a few sections coming up. Now, if you remember me earlier, I could have swore that rock over there straight ahead is where they landed Airwolf, but it turns out, as I mentioned, we thought we found it, but, you know, to Tim's uh, dislike, that wasn't it, fortunately. I was more paying attention to the cliffside here as we're kind of going around. Now, remember, this is a four-tide speed for your likes. So I'm sure you don't want to see us, like, cruise along a rock.
out of nowhere, we came up on this one really hard area. Basically, it's a shelf road that's undercut. It's got a lot of off-camera stuff. Tim kind of motors through things. He just goes, and I don't think he really is phased by the difficulty of this. To me, I was clenched pretty hard, hanging onto my seat, knowing off to the right that uh, there's quite a drop. Going the other way, there's big rocks. And that the shelf is undercut, so, you know, me being the one that likes life, thinking about, wow, this is pretty hairy. The video doesn't do it justice. You know, you're riding your trailer by yourself, or riding your Jeep by yourself after a while, especially on shelf roads and things you don't like. You start talking to yourself. It was nice. When Ellen decided, Chris's wife decided to jump in the Jeep and ride along with me, kind of talk me down from the ledge, so to speak, both literally and so to speak. Um, so it was nice to have her in the Jeep, especially as I went over the, some of these uh, shelf roads and off camber. It was nice to have a spotter aboard to help me along the trails. You'll notice as we go over this, we're climbing as we're coming up this hill. Going a little bit off camera. Some areas you could look over to see that. And I can't see, like, if there's a hole there, I can't see over my fender to see where my tire is. So I lean a little bit more towards the left, towards the cliff side. But you're climbing. It's about a thousand foot drop. Does not seem like fun. But it starts to mellow out here towards the top. First, I'm sorry about the profanity. I didn't expect to come around this turn, but I think it expresses how I felt. We had been on ridge roads now for, God, probably an hour, maybe two. And this was like a big rock, right in the middle of the road. Big drop, right to the right. Just came around the turn after just kind of cruising mildly and not doing anything. And now we're dealing with climbing rocks. And uh, so I had to call for a spot. And that was me calling for a spot. This was uh, probably the most intense part of the trail. One of the top two, I would say. You see, one of the hardest parts about this is as you're coming up to this rock, which is gonna take you off camera to the right, there's no room to fit your Jeep between the two. And mind you, I'm not the whitest of all Jeeps, I think, you know, of all the vehicles. And then, there's a big hole right where Tim's standing. So, going over the rock, which you'll see here, will lean you to the left. But, you gotta get around the big hole. And you gotta think about it. So, Tim's doing a great job spotting me. I'm doing a good job hanging on to my seat with my rear end. And we're navigating through this uh, pothole, strewn road, trail, path, goat trail, whatever you want to call it. I made a buy with some good spotting, but uh, needless to say, a little profanity, a little pucker, a lot of fun. What's that?
What I love the most about finding people and having people go out and explore with is just the way you work together. Everything from meeting new people like Brian, which you saw earlier in the trip, uh, from Overland Calling, to having Tim spot me through rocks like this. You know you're not alone. You know you have friends. Yeah, sometimes people get grumpy or they're sick or something happens. But it's all water under the bridge. You all have each other. You you know, in a time of need, you rally together. Everything from, like, Ellen coming to sit with me in my Jeep to Kyle and Stephanie when they had problems with their tongue on the rim rocker. At the beginning of the rim rocker, we went and found them, made sure they were okay. It's about the camaraderie is part of the reason why I love overlanding. Um, exploring is also a good reason. Trying new trails like this, testing your limits. Being comfortable with the uncomfortable and just having fun. You know, at the end of the day, it's about the people, the places you go, and the things you do.
So after a bit, I came to a point where I handed my camera off to Ellen so she could video of us on this cliff while we were driving because I had two hands on the wheel and the only way I was going to get both hands off the wheels was with crowbar. So I handed off the microphone to her to let her record for a while. And here you go. She's recording for the passenger seat and you can see just how close Chris's rig comes to the side of the hill and the sheer drop. Fun times. I mentioned earlier we found a place where we eventually had to turn around because it got too steep. The rock hill was just too much of an overhang. Uh, we had been over several shelf roads already, had some temporary, like, major setbacks, but we made it through. It was slow going. I was puckering pretty hard throughout this whole trail. Uh, I don't like shelf roads, especially when they overhang like this. And we came to this spot, and you can see over to the right, uh, it gets really, really narrow. There's a shelf overhang. Tim got out, Taylor got out, everybody got out, walked ahead of it. You'll see in the videos ahead what it looks like. Uh, taken from, uh, Ella took my uh, Pocket 3, went for a walk with it, and you'll see that uh, pretty narrow, pretty sketchy. I'm happy we turned around, and uh, it made for a nice trip out. Got problems? Uh. <laughs> Once we got turned around, we realized that uh, some of the obstacles that we went over, we moved. We put them in the front of the trailer and, you know, they were going to create new challenges on the way out. And you'll see over the next two obstacles, for instance, this rock uh, proposed one obstacle we had to go around. Uh, then we had a, a pretty steep ledge that was on the opposite. The guys are good enough here as a team. Everybody's like, all right, let's move this rock. I, I was like, I'm not getting anywhere near that damn ledge. So I'll sit here in the car and do that. I'm not a ledge fan. And you'll see here, we're uh, doing some rock moving and pushing this over the side. There's nothing down below us but a, a long drop. So like a rolling stone, it goes down the hill. The next big obstacle was this big hole coming up. It's barely enough to fit a Jeep through and a truck. Um, thanks to uh, great spotting, Ellen, Ellen came out and spotted, but you could see that uh, one wrong step, you're going over the edge. So we had to get a few other Jeeps through here, well, Jeep in the Colorado through here to make it. So she was going up and spotting the crew to get them through.
So after a year of planning, hard work, and perseverance, I think that's the word for this trip, both both Moab and Rim Rocker in the books. We'll say we had a great team. A little stressful at times, doing things that you got to be comfortable with the uncomfortable, and I definitely was that in several areas. But we made it off the trail. We were all pretty hungry. The, the sky was getting darker, and we decided to take a drive into one of the little towns that's around Moab. And it, what I found interesting about this is you could be in Moab and be in the middle of mountains, and all of a sudden you drop out in the flat desert, basically, in this little town. Where we ended up having a pizza and some other food that was delicious, enjoyed each other's company. I think, you know, when looking back on this trip, what I remember the most isn't the shelf roads that scared the crap out of me. It's the company I had, how we all worked together, how people like Ellen, people like Tim, Taylor, everybody that attended, um, banded together. We overcame, we had fun, we kind of did something that, uh, None of us knew what we were getting into, but we all had fun doing it, and we all had fun together. Would I do it again? Yes, definitely. Would I tow my trailer again? No, don't think I would. I would take it without the trailer. If you haven't had a chance to get to Moab, and just even if you're not into off-roading and just want to get out and explore, get out there. Remember, enjoy the journey, learn, have that childlike curiosity, and explore. Embrace the adventure, and Moab truly was an adventure to embrace. Hope you liked the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.